Jesus name. Three Great. times running now. This is his third. His name is Zachary Cole. And Zachary's fiction and poetry has appeared in the Second Hand, Praxis Magazine, and the Sport Press. He's currently out at work on his very first novel. And we all hope that goes very well. Without further ado, Zach. This is a short story that I wrote, and it's called The First Bullet. Jay Watson uh, has stopped running for the first time in 10 minutes, and Fields knows that he's about to pass out. He's cleared two blocks of the most intense, overwhelming chaos he's, he's ever witnessed, and nearly had his front teeth knocked out by a policeman's stray elbow. But that doesn't matter. Nothing in the entire world matters except getting on air. He's leaning on WFAA's uh, sole news yeah. desk for support. But knows he wants to stand erect when he goes live. His hands will not stop shaking. Lights, Bobby, Jay yells. Jesus! Bobby, the station's chief cameraman, replies from the stage. Bobby looks paler than a bleached sheep, and the crew are fl frantically flicking on the ring of cameras and equipment huddled around the news desk. We're right in the middle of Julie's show. Something about, I don't know, zippers. Cut it, Jay says, trying to control his breath. His vision is swimming. In front of him is an ocean of hairy arms, cigarette smoke, buzzing light stands, and, ab and, ab and abandoned Italian sandwiches. It's the middle of lunch hour. Jay realizes, with something like amusement, that this is his first time in front of a news camera. He's the program director, not live talent. All of his reporters are still stuck at the plaza. One of the crew members hands Jay a microphone and almost trips over the wires as he darts back behind the cameras. Hot off the UP teletype, Bobby slips in between two cameras and forces a sheet of paper torn on the top into Jay's hands. We don't even have a bulletin title card set up, Bobby says. The audience have no idea what's going on. Heck, I don't know what's going on. Did, did he make it? Is he, is he still alive? The studio lights turn on all at once. Now Jay's vision is entirely gone. He can see nothing but whiteness, the smoke from the crew, sweat from his brow, dripping into the hollow of his eyes. But he hears so much more as the studio quiets, readying, getting ready to go live. He hears Julie Bennell two rooms over in Studio B, and she is indeed evaluating zippers. Sirens scream in the distance. Someone outside in the street yells, Oh Lord, what happened? Oh Lord, what happened? Instead of answering Bobby, Jay looks straight ahead into the most lens-like part of the whiteness in front of him and begins to tell the city of Dallas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, he says. You'll excuse me if I'm out of breath. About 10 minutes ago, a tragic thing happened. Jay knows he'll have to sit down before his knees or his heart or both give out. He glances up just once. His crew are statues, as bolted to the floor as the machines they wield. Julie Bunnell has zipped up. Even the questioning voice outside has vanished. He holds up the piece of paper Bobby gave him and strains to read the text. This is from the United Press. President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. The president carried in the arms of his wife, has been rushed to Parkland Hospital. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to give directions to my crew about what we're going to do for the next few minutes. 